Hello, um, this is virtual summer camp for the US, from the USC College of Engineering and Computing. This session today is on robotics. There are many robots going back in history. Gort is one that people, one of the first robots from the old movie, The Day the Earth Stood Still. Terminator robots, a little scary, from the Terminator movie series. Some uh, famous Star Wars robots, you might know some other robots from different movies or different TV shows. So we've been around and seen robots, but really, what is a robot? Well, the definition of a robot is a machine capable of carrying out a complex series of actions automatically. So complex series of actions and automatically. So that's the two key things to think about when you're thinking about robots. Now this is a pretty cool video from the Mythbusters guys. It's crazy how strong that spider that is terrifying. So my 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 director on Mythbusters was like, I will step on that. I will kill it. Ten ounces. Incredibly, incredibly light. Um, in fact, one of the heaviest things was this switch here up front, which isn't really a switch, it's just a glowing blue light that acts as the eye. And it's, I, I mean, I totally get the aesthetics. Like I said, I broke it very quickly after receiving it. Um, I hooked a battery up backwards and fried its motherboard, so I sent it back to Hong Kong. They fixed it immediately and sent it right back to the jigs. So I'll jump legs. around a little bit. It has these little servos that actuate the legs. Has a controller. This is for looking up. Yeah, that's, oh. that's one that's slightly out. All right, all right, all right. Wake up. <laughs> you can also get it to go up higher. <laughs> Which is the best version of. So, is this a robot? Freaking creepy. There we go. Is it carrying out complex yeah, actions really cool, so. automatically? It's mostly remote controlled, almost like a remote controlled car, because the user is steering it and driving it. But at the same time, it's coordinating all the leg movement for the many different articulations in the eight different legs. So it's somewhere out there. It's remote controlled, but it's also in between because it, it has some complex action, but it's basically told what to do and where to go. This is a neat one. A remote control airplane, it looks like. But it's flying autonomously, which means without anybody controlling it. It's using sensors, like cameras, gyros, compass sensor, maybe GPS. So it's trying to avoid trees. How does this happen? It's real time analyzing what's around it and trying to avoid obstacles while still going towards its target. So trying to figure out where to go, how to go, get there, that's sort of a complex task. Uh, the user doesn't steer it everywhere it goes. It just tells it, go in this direction or go to this target. And try, you figure out how to get there. This is one of my favorite videos out there. A big dog robot. He's been out there for a while. They have some new versions. So four legs. Sort of walks like a big animal. You can see the spinning sensor on the top. That's one of the sensors for doing motion sensing and seeing the world around it. 
Why did he just kick the robot? Because the robot has to respond to disturbances and upsets. Has to figure out how to walk on uncertain ground. If something happens, it has to recover and keep going where it's supposed to be going. So, is it a complex task? Well, it depends. Some, some surfaces are pretty complex. If you're on a, a rocky ground or a icy ground, or even just walking up steps is surprisingly challenging for robots. It's not a super easy task. So it has to read the surroundings, get a sensor, sensor reading from all around it. It's almost like they're prancing around. At the higher levels, I think there's still a human telling it pretty much what direction to go, but it figures out all the individual, uh, where to put its foot, how to move from one spot to another. There's a big one. This is what, five or six years ago. This is an old video. They have some newer, smaller ones too. So the new ones are smaller and sleeker. The same companies also made some that are in a human form. So robots don't have to be in a human form, but if you make them in a human form, sometimes they seem a little creepier. He's not supported by the wires. Those are just there in case he falls over to catch him. Can he make him look like he's human? Walking, twisting, balancing, jumping, running. That's what they're working on. How do you integrate computers and motors and sensors and software to make the robots do activities, to do activities automatically? emulate different motions similar to humans. So they're trying to articulate close to what a human would be. What about an automated warehouse? You have an order. It automatically goes Pull stuff off the shelf. Assembles that order. Is it a complex task? It's not a very complex task. But if you have a large warehouse, it could be relatively complex. So you feed from different lines. You basically stack it up onto one stack. So for one store, you may have three of one and two of the other. So you put the different beverages together on one pallet to be delivered to a store. McDonald's what about cashiers. automated cashiers? Just a computer interface, really, right? Again, these are the first ones. Nine, six, is it a complex six, task? Third Avenue. It does it automatically. The first were around in Europe. It gets your order. And now, well, fifteen dollars an hour minimum wage will replace some cashiers. Yes, so quick plans. Takes your money. Sends your order to the cooks. So, people are always worried about automation. Um, 
ideally automation should lead to a higher quality of life. So safer life, more free time uh, by doing things like they talk about the washing machines. You have, it doesn't take as long to do laundry, so it should be more free time. Um, but people are always worried about their jobs being removed or eliminated. Like we've automated a lot of farming. We have bigger equipment that's a lot more autonomous. You don't have as many people driving horses through the fields to harvest fields. You even in um, auto automobile manufacturing, you have factories. You don't have people building cars by hand. It's a lot of robots putting together. There's still humans there, but maybe the rest of them can be automated as well. One thing to worry about is always robots fighting war. What if you have an automated robot? Fully automated. You turn it loose and just goes out and destroys things. So that's an ethical question to consider. How do we limit that? Do we always have a, a human making the ultimate decisions on, on robotics? So these are all issues related to robotics. What The future is coming quickly. We have cheaper computing. Automation is getting more and more. And it helps us do things, but it can still also be disruptive in our life. Any technology can be disruptive and change quality of life, jobs, and even affect war. There may be other issues I haven't even put here. So you may want to think about that. What would happen if we have robots everywhere or if we have more automation? How is it going to affect everyone? So I worry about this. My kids are going into high school, early in high school. And I think about what are some future-proof possibly careers that automation won't get rid of. So that's something I worry with. So dealing with uncertainty, anything that's, you know, if you have a stack in a warehouse, that's pretty not a lot of uncertainty. But a paramedic that comes onto the scene of an accident or a nurse that has to deal with all sorts of different people or teaching people, you don't think about it. But when you have questions, everybody learns differently. So there's not a one-size-fit-all web page that teaches everybody everything although Khan Academy does pretty well but in general we have when you get a question we need to figure out what you don't understand effectively to, that's one of the things we have to do as teachers creating new ideas robots aren't good at doing things like art and music you can program them to follow a, a, what they call a pastiche a, a type or a the, the, of music you can make art I've done some computer programmed art but it's just sort of within the bounds of randomness. Engineering design. Engineering and science is creating new ideas, new designs, new discoveries, and robots aren't quite there yet. Sometimes they help us do things in engineering, but they're not creating. Unstructured problem solving, like doctors and lawyers, or just fixing things, fixing things around the house, your air conditioner, your plumbing. If it's broken, how do you diagnose it and fix it? Uh, non-routine physical work, like a physical therapist that helps you when you're hurt. They have to figure out what's wrong with you and figure out what's working and what's helping. Cooking and driving. Actually, cooking has been automated. They have some robots that sometimes cook. And driving is also being more and more automated with different cars that are out there with the sensors that are getting cheaper and cheaper and computers getting cheaper and cheaper. So the next 20, 30, 40 years could be very disruptive because of automation and robotics. Related to automation and robotics is 3D printing. And 3D printing is like a robot that makes stuff. So reductive processes, traditionally, there's two things, reductive and additive. Reductive is cutting away material like machining. It's like a drill that you move around and you cut away from a plastic or piece of metal. Additive processes add stuff to something like 3D printing. Because computers have gotten so inexpensive, automation has helped become more reachable. A lot of people can have access to these. 20 years ago, when I first started at USC, we had a 3D printer, and it was one of the few ones out there because it costs thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. Now you can go order one off the internet for a few hundred bucks. I think Home Depot and used to carry one. Go to the local store and buy supplies for it. This is a cool video. It's not exactly what you traditionally think about when you're doing plastic printing. This guy set up an interesting experiment out in the desert. A 3D printer in the desert. He has 
looks like four lenses, Fresnel, Fresnel lenses. 